Hi guys, and welcome to this our video on measures of centre. My name is Darren from Escuru. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, what am I going to do today? Well, the learning objectives behind me, I'll go through those in just a second. But I'm going to ask, can you please subscribe to me on YouTube? That one little click from you, very, very small gesture, but it means the world to me. The reason being is ugh, nobody watches these videos, and by clicking, you just let me know that you are watching. There is also TikTok and all those other social media things as well. So if you want to sign up and follow me on those, that'd be great too. What are we doing today? We're going to understand the mean and median as measures of centre and know whether to use the mean or the median as a measure of centre for a particular distribution or which one of those to use. Now you've been doing this since about year seven. You've been able to find the mean, the median, the mode, the range all the way from year seven. So we're just going to recap that but just realise it is really important for the rest of this course and year 12. So if you haven't already seen the previous videos, this will build on that information, all right? So we'll be talking about sort of the shapes of distributions. And if you watch the previous video, you'll be able to say, ah, oh, that one there is either perfectly symmetrical, and it's pretty perfect to me, or approximately symmetrical, and there's positive skew and negative skew and all that type of stuff. So if you haven't watched it, go over to mathsguru.com and also realize you can download all the notes. Everything I write on behind me, you can download as well. All right, so when we were at school, what was the mean? Well, we had it drilled into us, didn't we? The mean, you add all the numbers together and you divide by how many numbers there are. But why? What is the mean? Uh, you're going to say to me, it's the average, aren't you? Yes, I know, because your teacher's told you that. But have you ever said, look, what is it? How does it work? What is this average? Again, I don't think I've ever come up with a great way to explain what the mean is other than to say, oh, it's the average of the numbers. Really? But how is it the average? Hmm, let's not think too deeply. This is general maths. Let's just get through it. All right, so let's go with this, the average. But because we're now at a VCE or A level or whatever course you are uh, currently studying and watching this video, then we use letters. And as you can see here, where I've said it's all Greek to me, all right, we've used a different way of talking about the mean. So the first thing to know is that X bar is equal to the mean. All right, so when we write X bar, we're now going to say that's the mean of a set of numbers. What is this E thing? All right, so E, now if you've used Microsoft Excel, then you'll know that sigma, all right, is basically the shorthand for sum. Oh, so we've got E here, so sum, what is this X? Well, that is each data item. So what that now means is, so when I write E, of x, all right, or actually let's do it the proper way, then what that means is sum all my individual data items. Oh, okay, well, let's add all the numbers together, sum the data items, and n here stands for the number of data items. Now, again, this is one of those things you probably just want to put in your summary book just in case they uh, bring it up in the exam and you go, oh, what does that mean, all right? So, again, that is just a Greek way or a mathematical way of taking all those words and writing it nice and simpler. So let's do an example, finding the mean. The following data set shows the number of premierships won by each of the current AFL teams until the end of 2021. What on earth is AFL? No, I'm joking, I know what it is. It's soccer, yeah? <laughs> okay, don't throw things at the screen, keezy. All right, so all those fully teams out there, find the mean of the number of premierships. All right, round your answer to one decimal place. Now, one of the things I'm gonna say is in exams, particularly in year 12, the examiners say time and time again that people do not uh, round to decimal places, right? They, they don't read the question. They sort of get halfway through the question, and go, yeah, I know how to do this, and then just stop. Oh, don't do that, please don't do that, all right? Make sure you round appropriately and then you'll get the mark, otherwise they're not the mark off. So what do we want to do? Find the mean of the number of premises one, round your answer. Well, we can't find the mean of the names, we can only find mean of numbers, so it would suggest we're gonna take all of my premiership numbers, 16, 16, 15, 13, 13, add them together and divide by how many numbers there are. Well, I can't do that in my head, so what I'm gonna do is load up my TI Inspire. Now, I know many of you out there also use the class pad, the functionality is pretty much the same. If in any of my videos I uh, realize the class pad does things differently, I promise you I will use the class pad. But in this situation, what are we gonna do? We're just gonna add all of those numbers together. So we've got 16 plus 16 plus 15 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 11 plus 9 plus 5 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. Now you're gonna try and say, why on earth did I add all those zeros? I didn't really need to, okay? So when I hit enter there, I get 125. Now, lots of people will go ahead and go, well, okay, I'm done now. But what if I've missed a number? 
what if I've made a mistake? Hmm. So what I now tend to do as a check is do them backwards. Zero plus zero plus zero plus one plus one plus two plus two plus four plus four plus five plus nine plus eleven plus thirteen plus thirteen plus thirteen plus 15 plus 16 plus 16, hit enter 125. Now the chances are either I've missed the same number twice or it is 125. So I can now say that x bar is equal to 125 divided by what? Well, the number of data items we have. Now I know at the moment the calculator is covering things over, but all I've done that. So if I look at my formula, x bar is equal to sum of all the x, which I've done, divided by n, the number of data items. All I do is count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now it's important to note that you actually count the zeros. They are actually data items that need to be counted. And all I'm now going to do is 125 divided by 18, hit enter, and what do I get? I get a decimal number. Now do I write that whole decimal number down? No, nope, I got around it to one decimal place. So that's going to be 6.9. So therefore, x bar is equal to 6.9. Now what that means is the average number of premierships won is 6.9. What does that mean? That's a very good question. Does it mean anything on its own? Not particularly. Now, actually, there is another way of finding out the mean. I'm sort of going to jump ahead to a sort of later video because I can actually go uh, menu. No, not menu. Let's escape that. I'm going to go control plus, And then what I'm going to add is a list and spreadsheet. And what I'm going to put here on the top is prem for premierships. And when you're doing this, you must always, always, always make sure that you put that first thing in there. Put the data title in first. And this is just a spreadsheet. And I'm going to go 16... 16, 15, 13, 13, 13, 11, 9, 5, 4, 4, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 0. Now, the reason I like doing it this way is because I now know from my question that there were 18 data items, all right? So if you remember, there were 18 data items. And what do I notice? Well, I notice that the row is numbered 18. So they're fairly sure I've got all my data items in there. Have I made any mistakes by doing 133 instead of 13? No. All right, now, your calculator is important. If you know how to use your calculator, trust me, you will smash any exam that they give you, right? But it's key to understanding it. So now what I'm gonna do is go menu. I'm gonna go statistics. I'm gonna go statistics calculations. And I'm going to do one variable statistics. The reason it's one variable is I've just got one list of numbers. It says number of lists. I've never really understood why it does that, but I've just said one. And then it says X list. What is your X list? Well, I'm going to click down on that down arrow and click Prem. The rest of it I'm going to leave the same. And what you notice is that I get all of this information on my screen. Yeah, so it's done all of this information on my screen. And what do I notice the first box here says? It's got that X bar. Hold on, that's the mean. A 6.944. Now you're going to say, well, that's a lot of work. Can't I just do it on my calculator the other way? Absolutely. But what comes in handy later is information that we are also going to be able to use to help us find the number of data items, 19, the minimum value, zero, our maximum value, 16, and all of this becomes massively important a bit later on. But that was sort of pre-learning, if you will. To find the median, you've got to find the number that's in the middle of an ordered set. Now, in a previous video, we talked about doing a, uh, what was it, a stem and leaf diagram or stem plot. And stem plots become unordered and they become ordered. Why do we order them? Because that helps us find the middle. We can only find the middle with ordered data. Now, in this particular example here, if you notice, and I've taken it from the Cambridge uh, General Mass textbook, there's the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, and 11. Okay, where is the middle number? Now, there's lots of ways of doing this. The way I tend to do it, and I'll show you both, is put the numbers in order, and then I just arbitrarily cross numbers off the front and the end of the list. So I'm going to go 1, 2 off the front, 2 off the end, 2 off the front, two off the end. Because what I'm doing is I'm working my way in closer and closer to the middle. One off the front, one off the end. And as it turns out, there we go, I've now reached my middle number. Now, that's lovely. So in that situation, the median happens to be six. Beautiful. 
That was an odd number of numbers though. So if we count how many numbers there are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 11 numbers. I got one number in the middle. What about the next thing? Well, here I've now got an even number of data items. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I know I've already highlighted the medium for you, but let's just do it the same way as did before. One, two off the front, two off the end, two off the front, two off the end, one off the front, one off the end. And now I've got those two middle numbers. If I cross them off, I've got no numbers left to sit in the middle. So what we do is we say, well, okay, we take those two middle numbers and we find what is halfway between. Now, if you know anything about, you know, finding halfway between, so used to not being able to spell, you add the two numbers together and divide by two. So if I ever want to find the middle between two numbers, I'm going to do six plus seven divided by two. Well, six plus seven is 13. Divide by two gives me six. Point five, And you will say, well, that's fairly pointless. I, I know that six and a half is between six and seven. I know, but sometimes data is not nicely numbered. You might have, I know, seven and 42, right? They might give you seven and then 42 as the two middle numbers. The easiest way to add them together is to find the middle point is add them together and divide by two. Is there another way of doing it? Of course there is. It's maths. There's always one way, uh, more than one way of doing it. Right. If you know how many data items there are, you can find the position of the middle number. Okay, so what do we say there were? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There was 11 numbers. So if I say there are 11 numbers, the rule is add one and divide by two to find the position of the middle number. So 11 plus one is 12. 12 divided by two is six. Now, that tells me my middle is the sixth number in the ordered list. So that's number one, two, three, four, five and there we go and well lo and behold we already knew that my median was six now a lot of people get confused they go well hold on a moment isn't that just the median then no and this example wasn't particularly great because we try and not you know use a number that's going to be the same as the position but anyway the median there is six does it work for the next one let's see we knew we had 12 data items so 12 data items plus one divided by two 13 divided by two is six 0.5. What that means is the number is between the sixth and the seventh number. All right, so it's halfway between the sixth and the seventh number. Well, let's check again. That's my first number, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh number. So there we go. Sixth and seventh number happens to be in this situation a six and a seven. And then you go away and say, well, what's halfway between the six and seven? It's totally up to you which way you do it. All right. But again, here is a slide for your summary book if you want to. And write the, you know, print these off of mathscrewy.com and write all over them if you need to. All right. Don't just take my word for it. Right now, then we got to find the median from a stem plot. Now, find the median from a stem plot. Remember, a stem plot is there simply to put the data in a visual way, but it's still just a list of numbers. So this number here is really just the number two. That number there is the number five. So if we were to write these numbers out in order, what would I have? I would have two, I'd have five, I'd have 21, 24, 25, 28. Now again, don't get confused with a stem plot. If you don't know how to do it, I've done a previous video on it. Now, how do we find the median? Exactly the same way. You can cross numbers off the front and the end. Now, when we cross off the front, we want to move left to right. So when we're crossing off, we want to move left to right. When we're at the end, we want to move right to left. Right, right to left. I don't know whether that's actually doing that right on my screen, but anyway, I'm confusing myself looking at myself. It's weird. So let me see. I'm going to cross two numbers off the front and two numbers off the end. Well, that could be tedious. Let's do three numbers off the front this time. One, two, three numbers off the front. One, two, and remember, three numbers off the end. I'd have to go back to the eight to go five, four, two, seven, five, four, yeah? So let's do three numbers from the front, three numbers from the end. One, two, three numbers from the front. One, two, three numbers from the end. And there we go. One is my median. Yes? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nope. Why? Because that one is in the 40 row, so it would have to be 41. So in this situation, my median would be 41. Could we do it the other way? 
Could we work it out as from find the position of the number and work it out? Well, let's just see. How many data items do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So there are 23 data items. So what was the rule? How do we find the position of the middle number? Well, I'm going to add 1. So I'm going to do 23. I'm going to plus 1 and divide by 2. So 23 plus 1 is 24, divide by 2 is 12. So we know that the median is in the 12th position. All right, so again, so long as I now count from the beginning all the way through to the 12th, so let me see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Whew. Sigh of relief, it actually tied up. So again, that one would be circled and it would be 41. All right, let's find the median of this stem plot, right? See, is it the same? No, different one. All right, so let's just find the median again. I'm going to do it both ways. No, actually, let's do it the hard way, right? Let's make life easier for yourself. The first thing I need to do is find my number of data items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There are 18 data items. Right, where will the middle one be? Well, the rule is to add one and divide by two. So that's 19 divided by two is gonna be 9.5. Does that mean my median is 9.5? Nope, it means that it's gonna fall between the ninth and the 10th term, all right? So let's now count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go, so between my ninth and my 10th term. Whew. What happens if you count backwards? Would that still be the same? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ooh, ninth and 10th. Again, that was lucky. All right, so the numbers between four and nine, yeah? Nah, between 34 and 39. So we've got to find halfway between 34 and 39. How do we find? You add them together and you divide by two. So 34 plus 39 is going to give me 73. Divide that by two. Can I do that in my head? Nap. So let's use my calculator. And again, there's nothing wrong with using a calculator uh, to get the right answer. I'd rather do that and get the right answer than try and fuff around in my head. Yeah, you should probably argue that, oh, you're a math teacher, you should know how to do it in your head. Yep, but why would I, when I'm old, I can just use my calculator. And there we go. So my median in that situation would be 36.5. Now moving on to another one, let's find the median from a dot plot. How are we gonna find it from a dot plot? It's exactly the same, remember dots just stand for numbers. So how many numbers have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 numbers. There are 19 numbers, and add one divided by two gives me that it is going to be in my 10th position, all right? My 10th position. So what have I got here? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and there we go, that's my 10th position. And because it's in a column that has five in it, therefore I would know that my medium was equal to five. All right, nice and easy. We could have done the crossing off, but I'm gonna start using positions. Now, the last part of this video talks about comparing the mean and the median. In year 12, we're gonna make judgments about data based on the value of the mean and the median. So we're gonna compare them, because on their own, not particularly useful, all right? What we do know is that when the mean and the median are about the same, right? so when the mean of the data, when we work it out and then we find the median and they are about the same, we can suggest that the data is probably approximately symmetrical. That's really, really important for year 12. When they are different, when the mean and the median are different, then basically it comes out as either positively skewed or negatively skewed. Now again, we'll deal with more of that a bit later on, but it's important to know that that's why the mean and the median and calculating them are so, so important. And there we go, guys. That's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you can, head over to mathsguru.com. Sign up. It's totally free to sign up. The videos are there. Downloadable notes, yada, yada, yada. Subscribe to me on YouTube if you can. Follow me on TikTok and all those other social medias. Um, and if not, well, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Please take care and stay safe.